Hello and welcome to my shed. And today I'm going to be uh, rigging up some duck decoys. Um, I'm sure we've all done it in different ways. Um, today I'm going to be doing it on a total budget. I'm going to be doing it spending the least amount of money possible. Um, so we'll just get cracked on. I'm using some very old rubbishy decoys that I got um, from Amazon. I think these were Nighthawk decoys. They were only a couple of quid. Um, and they're already rigged up, but I'm sure we've all tried to do it with bits of nylon, with twine, paracord, all sorts of things, which is great. It works okay, but I'm sure you've all had it. First thing in the morning, pitch dark, and your lines are all in an absolute mess. So I'm sick of doing it. So I've promised myself that I'm not going to do another year of guddling about in the dark, eh, trying to untangle all this mess. So as I say, we're going to do it on a total budget. There are right ways to rig them, there are wrong ways to rig them. Um, I'm just going to do the way that I find easiest and the way that I find is most effective. So I'm just cutting off this old rubbish. So first thing, it's not a, an expensive decoy. It's quite a cheap and nasty one. Um, and of course, there was a little ring at the front here. That's now broken off because we, we do wild fouling. Things get broken quite quickly. So what I've done is I've drilled a few holes. I don't know if you'll be able to see there. I've drilled a hole there and I've drilled a hole here. Now the reason that I've drilled these holes is just, I like to rig them three different ways. So why I do it at the side is so that when it hangs in the current, it'll go back and forward like this. Plus, if you've ever noticed any ducks that are all facing the same direction, they're getting frightened, they're wanting to go somewhere, they're, they're leaving. So my theory, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, is if I have some from the back here, they'll be facing downstream, um, against the stream, towards, it makes a more natural uh, looking rig. So we'll get, we'll get rattled on with these. So as I say, um, I've just pulled some things together. I could have bought a, a propriety uh, rigging system. I've not. What I've done is I've got some crimps. Now these crimps I got from a fencing company, I think it was, just online. Um, and they were wire rope crimps, because the ones that I was getting for fishing or decoy were quite thin, quite narrow. Um, so I wanted ones with a slightly bigger gauge. They're not a... They're just... They're, they're not like two separate tubes or anything there, just a plain old ferro, as I say, wire rope ferro. And what I'm using to rig them today is this. You might recognise this as thick nylon, what have you. However, what it is, strimmer line, weed whacker, what you call it, trimmer. I've gone for the three mil stuff and you get 28 metres. It's something like a five or six pounds um, for a roll and that'll do me for any amount. So my way of doing them is I'm just going to put the first one, I had to think for a sec, put the first one through my middle hole, want to put it through, there we go, straight through and drop the decoy down. On with my first bit of ferro, on and round we go, back through this, here we are, and just uh, make it kind of flush with the end here. Because, as you know, it catches on flipping everything in your bag if you leave them. Just a standard pair of pliers, and I'm just going to start squeezing it down. There we go. Let's see how we got on here. There we are. You don't have to squeeze it like the world's strongest man, just as long as it's not going to um, come undone. And watch all your decoys floating off down into the middle of nowhere. So that's the first part done. Now the reason that I leave a little loop here is just so I can gather them all together. Once I've got them all laid out, um, I'm out, out in the marsh and I can drag them around. I think in America they use like a carabiner clip when they wade out to their ponds or, or wet bits. I don't have that luxury of having like wetlands. Um, I do a lot of my duck shooting on the foreshore, which as uh, everyone in Britain will know is wild fowling. Um, has other terms elsewhere, I'm quite sure. Um, but we don't have that luxury. Um, sometimes we're pitch dark in thick, thick, sticky mud. Um, 
we, we can't go and individually place them out and tow a big lot of them out around. So that's kind of superfluous um, for, for some people. But basically, anything that will stop them slipping back through. As you see, that will sit there like that. It's not coming through anywhere. Now, I happen to know that on a sort of medium tide to low tide, I'll be able to wade across where I generally do my, my well fouling. And it comes up to about this high on me. Uh, chest waders finish there and there's about that much space. So I know that I can measure it from the ground. So I'll just stand up while I measure it off. So I went that and back down again. So I went double that length. There's no great dark arts to it, as far as I can see. But then again, I'm just a hobbyist. Uh, I'm just going to use my pliers to cut this. There you go. And what I always think is that when you cut it, it makes it flat and you can't get it through the ferrule again. So I'm just going to squeeze it back in again, just to make it a bit more round. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Because we're doing it on a budget, I'm going to use the old hooks uh, clips again. I got these clips from a guy on Facebook. I forget his name, but if you look on the Scottish Wild Fowling or Goose and Duck Hunting Scotland, there's a chap who occasionally advertises these. They were only a pound each. So, do for me. So I'm just going to do the same again. Thread it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, sorry, beg your pardon, get another one of these ferrules. Thread that onto the line. Here we go. Through. So that's sitting there, put this one through, back round and through the ferrule again. Now with this one I'm going to pull it really down quite tight, okay, just so it makes a smaller loop, less things to get caught in and again make sure it's just flush with the end here. And once more get my trusty pliers and crimp that off. So I use all sorts of decoys. Um, these are just standard duck, whether they're, I suppose mallard hen is what they're supposed to look like. But in the half light, I do all my shooting first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Um, I've not really noticed a great deal of difference. Let's say I got these from Amazon, from I think they're Nighthawk, I think these ones are, just a couple of pounds. In, certainly in where I live in Scotland, there's a decathlon store quite close by and I get these ones. These are just cheap as cheap, dirt, dirt cheap, a couple of pounds, and they're really good. As you see, I caught quid in. Um, what else have I got? I've got a bucket of stuff here. I've got a um, teal, little great teal. Again, just a couple of pounds, and I've rigged these all the same way. So, where were we? Let's get this one finished before we digress any further. Here we go. I've got my got my line. The beauty of this this um, strimmer line is it's strong, it's bendy, it won't knot, and it's again super cheap. I like it. Of course coming from Scotland anything that's cheaper is generally better. So that's it, pretty much done. I'll just wind it all up now. Here we go. There we go. And clip it on somewhere. As I say, this might not be the, the correct way to do it, the right way, but it works for me. And if it looks stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid. So there you go, one of them rigged. Now what my, um, I generally do is I can run either a mother line along and clip those on um, if, I'm, if I've got a wide bit, of, wide bit of water to cover, or what I usually do is just um, eight ounce sinkers, have a little loop of wire on the top of them, so I can clip it on and throw the whole kit and caboodle out and then I can wade out and drag them back in at a later date. Preferably if I'm shooting on a falling tide, throw it out when the tide's up and then I can get out much e more easily. So hopefully that's quick and to the point-ish. So all you need is some wire rope ferrules, some strimmer line, three mil stuff that I use, 28 metres of it, um, my Nighthawk decoy from Amazon or Decathlon. Can't beat it. Enjoy. Let me know how you get on. Pop some comments in. As I say, it might not be correct, but it works for me.
So enjoy, enjoy your wild fowling and uh, enjoy getting everything ready for September. Okay, cheerio chaps, bye. bye.